Hello all, in today's video we are going to learn about the topic introduction to sockets. What are sockets? Sockets are the basic building blocks of a network communication system which enables processes on different machines to exchange data like the web browsers, the email clients, FTPs, etc. So basically socket provides an abstraction for inter-process communication on a network. A socket can be defined as an end point of a two-way communication link between two processes or programs running on the network. This mechanism provides IPC that is inter-process communication by establishing named contact points which are basically a combination of the IP address and the software port numbers. Let us see what are the different types of sockets. We have stream sockets, datagram sockets and raw sockets. Stream sockets allow processes to communicate using the TCP protocol. As you all know, TCP is reliable and connection oriented. So the stream socket provides bidirectional, reliable, sequenced and unduplicated flow of data with no record boundaries. Here we establish a connection, then the data is being read or written and then we close the connection where the sockets are transmitting byte streams. The socket type is referred to as sock underscore stream meaning stream sockets. Then we have datagram sockets which allow processes to communicate using the UDP protocol that is the user datagram protocol. That is why we name it as datagram sockets as you all know. The UDP protocol is connection less unreliable protocol. Though we have a bidirectional flow of messages but we do not guarantee that the messages received will be in order or basically we may receive duplicate messages. Here the record boundaries of data are preserved. The socket type is basically referred to as SOC underscore dgram meaning datagram sockets. The third type of socket is the raw sockets which are basically have access to lower, lower layer protocols such as the IP protocols basically used for troubleshooting and network diagnostic services. Coming on to the socket API. As I told you that a socket is providing a communication between different processes. For that we need to have some list of functions or an API which will help us in establishing setting up and establishing the connection to other users on the network to send and receive data to and from the other users and closing down the connections. Let us see using this API how does a socket work. Sockets are commonly used for client server interaction where we will configure a server on one machine and a client on another machine where the client connects to the server exchange of information will take place and then we will close down the connection. Let us see the typical flow of events using the APIs for a connection oriented socket session. As I told you we have a client server connection where both the client and the server make use of a function from the API called as a socket function which is used to create a socket where a socket is an end point for a communication, an end point at the client side and the end point at the server side. Secondly, as I told you, the socket being created is a named contact point where a named contact point means we establish it using the bind function. This bind function will bind the IP address and the port number to make the socket as a named contact point. So basically the second step is to bind the IP address and the uh, port number which is optional at the client side but it's a compulsion at the server side. Once the socket is named it is ready to listen. Ready to listen means it is ready for a connection from the client provided the client makes use of a function called as a connect to request a connection from the server. As it is requesting for a connection from the server and the server is ready to listen then the server will accept the connection. Once the connection is being accepted now the client and server both can send and receive the messages using the send receive functions. 
once the send and receive of messages is done the connection can be closed let us see how basically what are the different uh, uh, api functions done used at the client side and the server side as i told you both the client and server function will make use of the socket function to create a socket bind function is basically used by the server to bind the ip address and the port number and once it is bind the uh, server uh, the socket becomes a named contact point which is ready to listen then the client will give a function called as connect requesting for a connection to the server once the server accepts it we can transmit data receive transmit and receive the data using the functions like send send to receive or receive from once the communication is over we will close or we will disconnect so basically a socket function is used to create a socket a bind is used to provide an identification number to the so socket just as we have a telephone number which is used to identify a particular contact listen is used by the server to tell that it is ready to receive a connection connect is sent by the client to connect accept is a confirmation coming from the server to the client write is to send the data read is to receive the data and close is to close the connection so this is how a, a socket communication takes place now what is a socket address or socket addressing is a concept in computer networking that refers to the way in which the endpoints of a communication link are identified how do, are the sockets identified they are identified using the ip address of the computer and the port number of the application that together gives me the socket address coming on to the socket states every socket will have different states okay so these states will determine that which network operation is going to succeed which operations will be blocked or which operations will fail for this sockets have a finite number of states in which we will have datagram sockets for uh, socket states for datagram sockets and we have uh, tcp sockets for stream socket states for stream sockets let us see what are the datagram socket states datagram socket states are typically associated with the udp user datagram protocol and they are connection less endpoints so let us see what are the different states or the life cycle of a socket initially a socket is closed so we have to first open a socket and we create a socket using the socket function once the socket is being created it comes in a state called as it is opened and it is writable but we cannot start transmitting the data unless this socket is named so whenever i create a socket i will get an unnamed socket but when i make use of the bind function it becomes a it becomes a named contact point which is writable meaning i can read and write both the socket is readable where it can receive the data and it can also write the data what is not writable not writable means that if the output buffers are not available we cannot the sockets can't write the data once the reading and writing is over the socket issues a closed socket connection where the socket state comes to a closed state so these are the different states or the life cycle of a datagram socket state now coming on to the stream socket states these this is the diagram for stream socket states now to remind you that a stream socket state makes use of a tcp for creating the endpoints of a communication so wherein tcp may will make a virtual connection establishment it establishes a connection virtually so for that purpose we will have it seems to be more complicated than that of datagram sockets because here we have to establish a connection in the beginning the socket is being created using the socket function where now the socket state is opened but it doesn't become listening 
or named until and unless we bind it. Once we bind it, it comes to a state called as named and listening. Though it is named and listening, it has to be connected with the both the client and the server socket has to be connected. For that purpose, we have to make use of, we have to first establish a connection and that connection status connection pending where a request is being received but not yet established. Once the accept function is executed, the connection is established. Now the sockets are connected. Okay, once they are connected now, we can read the data, we can write the data. There we also have a state called as not writable, meaning that the output buffers are not available. So we are not able to write. But we are ready to receive the data and here we are able to write the data. There is something called as out of band data readable, meaning there is a possibility that we are receiving the data from a secondary stream, not from the primary, out of band data, which is some urgent or sensitive data. That kind of data is also readable. So after the sockets are created, they are named, connection is established, they are connected, data transmission takes place and then Finally, we give a request for closing the socket. Once the closing of socket is being accepted, the socket now becomes closed. This is the state where we stop, where the socket connection or the communication between both the endpoints is closed. So these are the different state a socket can be in either the datagram sockets or stream sockets. You, the same question can be asked in two ways. They may ask you to explain the socket states or they may ask you to show the life cycle of a socket. Life cycle of a socket. So this was about the introduction to sockets, socket types and we will, we have seen how the socket communication works and what are the different states of a socket. Thank you.